So today it's lightweight white wine Olympics the final. The song, please. Oh yeah. Pam 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 pam. I can do. I can do the movements. I'm not a very good singer. No, you're a terrible singer. That's the reason why I'm well equipped. There we go. <laughs> Happy Wine Olympics. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. May the best wines win. That's under our responsibility. Yeah, it's also your responsibility to choose mainstream wines, mm -hmm. not obscure wines in black glasses. <laughs> <laughs> We already checked our candidates' color in previous videos, and there are always one or two very different wines. It's been always Georgian wines. They show always different colors. You know, Georgia's been making wine for five to eight thousand years. And the Georgians have 300 words to describe just the color of wine. 300 different words. words. To describe the color of wine. So it's not surprising they're a little bit different. Because <laughs> there's so much variability. So these classes are perfect not to learn those three different yeah. words. The good Lord saw fit to give us five senses. Four of which are used for wine. Maybe even five. Smell, sight, touch, no, not sound, unless it's sparkling wine. Mm -hmm. And taste. Now, already, because wine doesn't have sound, mm -hmm. we are down to 80% of our senses. Yeah. And now you've taken another one away. So now we're down to 60% of our senses. So you remember what those five candidates are? Yes, I do. We have two Rieslings, a Mitzvani, then we had Malvasia, yeah. and we have an Assyrtiko from Greece. Yes! Okay, let's shoot! One, two, three. <laughs> because I don't see Maybe how much see how, how much I have in the glass. It's true. Can't see. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Your counting is very interesting. Three can be three One, or three. Two, three. It's about the same with each other. I like the shape of these glasses, that I must say. I spent quite some time to select these glasses. Yeah. Because I know you are very difficult with glasses. That's true. And there were so many shit black glasses. This one was good. In order to truly assess the quality, you have to, I believe, have some sense of what you have in the glass. If you have something in the glass that is truly Riesling and it tastes like Sauvignon Blanc, then do you rate it as a wine or do you rate it as a Sauvignon Blanc and say, but it was a Riesling, therefore it's not a very good Sauvignon Blanc. So you can see that, in fact, there is a connection, not a perfect connection, but a connection between what the wine is and its quality. That's true, yeah. Quality first. Yes, please. You're number one. My best wine. Yeah. Is number one. <laughs> one, two. Oh, you, yours too? Okay. By this much, but oh. mine too. Very interesting. You're number two. My number two is wine number two. Mm -hmm. Okay, not mine. My second highest score was a toss-up between wine number four and wine number five. Wine number five for me, the third best. Okay. Wine number three was my fourth. Number two was your least favorite. And number four was my least favorite. Right. So what we should do is write down for each one of us the position. Yeah. So winner, number one, gold medal. The silver medal goes to number five. And bronze medal? Number three. Number three. Okay. Well, shall we go and say what we think they are? Yep. Why number one? What do you think? I thought it was Assertico. That was a toss-up for me. Uh -huh. Between one and three. Mm -hmm. Which was the Malvasia and which was the Assertico. Why number two? German Riesling. So Why number three was the Malvasia. Malvasia. Yeah. Yeah. Why number four? Australian Riesling. Australian Riesling. Agreed. Yeah. Why number five then? Then, Georgia. Yeah, Georgia. So we're in agreement. Yeah. yeah. Why did I like wine number I thought wine number one was a complete wine. I agree. It yeah. had a slightly floral character. It wasn't as minerally as some, but quite minerally. Mm -hmm. It had a beautiful texture, a lovely weight in the mouth without being hot. It was just superbly round wine mm. with some grip, nothing too much and nothing too little. Mm. Just a lovely wine for aperitif or to go with food. Ah. It's really, really good. I really love the piercing acidity, at the same time the round texture of it too. Yeah. So wine number one. That is the Assyrtico. Right, good job, Jay. Uh, thank you. So this is uh, Assyrtico from Santorini, Greece. And this wins the gold medal. It's really beautiful. Yeah, it's really it's good. Really beautiful. Good job.
I love this wine. Yeah. It's fitting that the Greeks should win the Olympics. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it was not our intention, but no, it's true. Not. It wow. was the Greeks' intention. Though. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Recently, I learned so many things from you about Acertico. You learned so much, you now know more than me because I got it wrong and you got it right. <laughs> no, no. In fact, you didn't learn it from me, you stole it from me. You replaced my knowledge with your lack of knowledge. <laughs> All right, so our silver medal? Our silver medal went to wine, wine number, number five, five. Wine? which we both believe to be the Mitzvani yeah. from Georgia. All right, and we are perfectly correct. It's Mitzvani from Georgia. Nicholas Marani, 2018. Good shit. Look at this. Yeah, it's cleverly <laughs> one. They are not pandering to squeaky clean American palates. You want to drink real wine rooted in authenticity and history? That's what you get. I take my hat off and I applaud the importer who is probably stuck with that wine <laughs> for having the balls to bring in the cajones, to bring in the most beautiful wine, Georgian characters and all, with a label that should be hanging on the nail in the men's room wow. and it's gorgeous. Yeah, but it's really cloudy and I see there are lots of things uh, floating in the wine. Remember, when you put these things in the cuvée, you are committing yourself to skin contact. Third wine. Another beautiful wine. Yeah, Malvasia from uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia. Venezia Giulia philosophy. This is made by one of the cool kids. Beautiful wine. Yeah. None of these are usual wines. No, you did not go out and buy usual wines. These are all very particular wines, right? Molto particolare. <laughs> right. So this uh, Greek Assertico wins the gold medal and Georgian Mitzvani wins the silver medal and this Italian Malvasia wins the bronze medal. And the other two were Rieslings? Yeah. You preferred the German one and I preferred the Australian one. Yeah. Well, we got to confirm that that's correct, but I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Wine number two is the German Riesling. Yeah, Ule it's a, Yeah, Ule This is the only famous name here. Aha, uh -huh, that's true. 2019. And then the Australian Powell Riesling. 2018 Eden Valley Riesling. Yeah, that's an interesting result, isn't it? Yes. And in the end, I chose it because I thought it was slightly more complex, and I'm a complexity nut. We need to accentuate. Uh, no, 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 no. Which is the now the first now, now. now. complexity. Oh, complexity. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm not that mean to you. I wanted to accentuate complexity. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look at the name of my shirt. I'm going to take it off now because you insulted me. No. You, you hurt my feelings. No. Asirtikau, <laughs> Mayat <laughs> Levan. I'm telling you, you guys, you ask yourselves the question. Before Jay and I started to taste Asirtikau, talk about Asirtikau, be honest now. Which of you had ever heard of it? This is a really beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. It's a complete one. Ah, oh, this Asiatico. It's not even expensive. $25? That's why we live, eat, sleep and breathe, right? <laughs> right. Anybody can buy a $150 bottle of Premier Cru Merceau. Uh -huh. Anybody can do that. But the $25 gem that wins the Olympics, that we can help you with. Yeah. And this uh, silver medal, Mitzvani, it's also $25. Yeah. And so, who would have thought Mitzvani? Did you even know there was a grape called Mitzvani? Then it comes from Georgia. Have you ever had a wine from Georgia? And I don't mean Atlanta. Then, <laughs> then it comes from a region called Kacheti. Did you ever hear about Kacheti? And then, to top it all off, most of the Kvevri wines that we see, at least in the United States, from Kacheti in Georgia are made from Rikatsateli grape, not Mitzvani. Uh, yeah. So, Good job, Jay. In terms of you. obscure. <laughs> I, obscure gems. Yeah, obscure gems. These are tastes and smells that we are not used to that much in wine. No. But when we get them, we understand something and we say, yes, they're not the normal flavors associated with wine, but I can fit them mm -hmm. into the idea of wine. And there's nothing wrong with those flavors. In fact, they're really good. The taste and the smell, both of them are very unusual, but very good. 
For me, it's a little bit embarrassing result because except for this Italian wine, these wines are not from the mainstream country. It shows you they should be. But if they get to mainstream, then they will start to cost too much money. That's true. Also, Jay, you know, you chose very interesting wines to start. You know, you could have gone with the old favorites, the correct picking order. But then, uh, wines that are less known, that have the opportunity in terms of quality to compete for gold in our Olympics, wouldn't have had the chance, simply because they didn't have the reputation. If we had picked a white burgundy under $40... Meaning you want to drink some burgundy white now? I always want to drink burgundy white. But you're often not satisfied with the quality these days. A lot of failures in burgundy. The successes are sublime and the failures are only failures in the context of price quality, usually. We didn't hate them, yeah. we could easily drink them, we could easily finish a bottle, but we were slightly disappointed. There's a lot of disappointment in Burgundy, but it's worth persevering with because great Burgundy is great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Going back to the bad years, like 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006. All these expensive wines suffering from premature oxidation, now referred to as Primox. Just terrible. I paid a fortune for those 2005 Burgundies. It was the best year in 30 years, they all told me, and 70% of the whites that I bought were finished from oxidation within 18 months of me buying them. Yellow, oxidized, done. So that was the reason why you gave me many bottles of uh, 2005 Burgundy White. Because he didn't know anything at the time and he liked them, so I quickly gave them all to him. He thought Burgundy was supposed to taste like that. <laughs> I didn't particularly like them, but I liked it because it was free. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay. All right, so are you satisfied with the result of this? I'm satisfied that we did a good job. We had a great degree of conformity. We only disagreed on one wine. You had a good day today. You, you got them all right. You made it impossible, even if I had wanted to cheat, to cheat, because you wouldn't even let me look at the color. And I do feel in the context of our subscribers that there is plenty of information we gave them for them to go out and enlarge their repertoire and increase their enjoyment of wine by drinking things that are different that they may never ever have bumped into. They may try them and not like them, but they still have the confidence to try them. And then no one's trying to pull the wool over their eyes. Yeah, yeah. At least no. we didn't recommend poor quality wine. That's exactly the point. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't say it in three words like him, but that's <laughs> right. We did not represent poor quality wines. We did not recommend, should I say, poor quality wines. And I mean, we're not talking about $25 drinkable wine. We're talking about $25 absolutely delicious wines. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so don't forget to... Give us a love or two, some hugs to go with it. Spaced hugs. <laughs> and we look forward to doing this with you again. See you guys. Ciao. Ciao. If you want to learn about wine seriously from Peter and me, please click on the join button right next to the subscription box. Then click on wine class join button. This is way better than any other wine school in the world. A new wine class video is uploaded once every week and we also do a wine class on live streaming once a month. If you don't like it, you can cancel it anytime.